So I just got ghosted by the first guy I went on a date with after my divorce. We went out a couple of days ago. I downloaded Bumble three days ago because I was just like, okay, I'm going to like dip my toe back in the water and whatever. So I matched with this guy. He super swapped me. And then we started talking. He asked me to go out the next day. So we did. And we went out to eat for like lunch. We went and played mini golf. We went out to eat dinner. We went to his house, like watched a movie. I thought it went really well. Like, he even said, I would usually never ask a girl out from, like, an app so quickly, but I felt really intrigued by you or whatever. Like, he, and I even told him, like, because we spent a lot of time together. I was like, if you need me to, like, leave or, you know, whatever, then that's fine. And he was like, no, I'm a super straight up person. Like, I'll just tell you if I'm not feeling it or whatever. So, I think we have a nice time. I leave. And then, you know, we talk a little bit um, the next day like message back and forth and then today I did not hear from him at all and I see that he has unmatched me on Bumble like deleted me off Snapchat and blocked me on Instagram and I'm just like our last message like he asked me what I was doing and like I told him what I was doing and then he opened that and it was like and it's really upsetting like not because I think this guy was going to be like the love of my life or because I really liked him so much but it's more upsetting, like, the fact that this was my first, like, that was my first date since, you know, my divorce. And it's like, okay, it's going to be like that then. <laughs> like, I'm deleting this app. But um, also because, like, whenever you have been, sorry, I don't mean to cry, but whenever you have been, like, hurt and deceived and, like, been through intimate partner betrayal and you already doubt your intuition and like you don't trust yourself and like I've been really really good in my healing journey so far like um yeah I felt like I did trust myself and I felt like I've been doing a really good job and then something like this happens and it's just kind of like maybe I overestimated you know like myself a lot of us who have been with like narcissistic people men with like corn or SEX addictions they most always have an avoidant attachment style and a lot of times to adapt we either already had or we develop a more anxious attachment style and I've really been trying to work on that too and like I felt so comfortable in where I've been but it's just like by myself but now that it's like trying to factor other people into my life it's just kind of like I don't know how to do this part i really don't definitely opening up old abandonment wounds and rejection wounds and really highlighting like areas that i feel like i personally need to work on before i would be comfortable putting myself back in that position so i mean i guess if anything this was just a learning experience i do wish of course like i knew why he did that I, I did message him on snapchat which i don't know if he'll even get it or open it because he did unadd me but i was like if you didn't like me you could have just told me and it was funny because he like prided himself on being so mature and he is a year younger than me but he has two kids and like a good job and like is a homeowner and like I don't know. I just was not getting that vibe from him. We press forward and it'll be okay. I just want to like keep you guys updated on my journey, my healing journey, and as I navigate the world of like dating and hopefully it's not always going to be like this. And this is the reality of divorcing your husband and then getting on the dating apps, ladies, is you will be like a deer in the headlights, okay? You will be like fresh meat for all of the dirty, rotten scoundrels of men out there, especially on these dating apps, looking to take advantage of a woman just like you, who is fresh out of marriage, who is absolutely naive, gullible, and oblivious to how the dating market has changed, right? And many of these women too, um, they're not as young as this woman is. Uh, many women could be, uh, you know, up to my age if not older and they are not used to a world where you meet people online they were used to back in the day just like me right I mean we would meet people at the mall I mean I would go to my like if we want to meet cute chicks I would call my buddies be like hey let's go down the mall right put on your Z Cavaricis and your turtleneck and uh, let's go <laughs> right who wore Z Cavaricis remember 
Uh, so yeah, you, you would go to the mall and you would uh, meet women there or you would just meet people through your social circle or friends or school. And this is where these women met their husbands. Fast forward to 2024. Now they're divorcing their husbands and they're gonna get on Tinder or a Bumble and they're just completely just blindsided by not only the amount of attention they're getting. I mean, at first it seems really like you made the right decision because of the amount of guys messaging you like, oh my gosh, I was with this bum for so long and built a family with this bum and look at these better looking guys messaging me. Oh my gosh, now I really know my value. Uh, not realizing that these guys Unlike your husband who wanted to put a ring on it and be with just you, these guys, you're just, you know, you're just another cog in the wheel, right? <laughs> you're just, you're just another chick in the dating rotation, right? And for many of you, uh, you are leaving a stable marriage where you're with a guy that loves you, that cherishes you and values you. Um, and you're trading that for a guy who is just gonna see you as a piece of meat. That's the truth, right? This is why, you know, you should not, I mean, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, you should not be divorcing your husband. Most of these women that I hear yapping about um, them divorcing their husband, um, it's not a very good reason, right? I mean, the reasons are pretty shallow. If you listen to these chicks, they, they don't really have good reason to leave their husband. It's not like their husband's like super abusive or, you know, I mean, in many cases too, I hear these chicks say he's the perfect dude. He's the perfect man. He did, does everything I want. He checks all the boxes, but something's missing. Something's missing. It's like, no, nothing's missing. It's just, you're an idiot, right? The thing that's missing is your brain. You can't value a guy who made a lifetime commitment right he's giving up the women of the world to be with just you and one thing these chicks don't understand is and many of them find out the hard way is that you're thinking when you divorce your husband it's going to be you who's winning on these apps you who's gonna you're going to be winning on these uh in the dating market and you think your husband's, husband's gonna sit at home crying over you for the rest of his life? That's not what I see happen. What I often see happen is these women divorce their husbands and then they both get out there, start dating again, and their husband finds a younger, hotter, cooler woman who's willing to be loyal to him, willing to stay by his side, willing to be all the things that you were not willing to be, that you complained about, that you fought him on, Right? He moves on to bigger and better things while you, who actually divorced him, moves on to worse things, right? And, and, and I've already featured a, a number of these women who regret divorcing their husbands, especially, right? Especially once they see that he's moved on to someone better, right? These women can't stand that. I've told you guys this. They cannot stand, your ex cannot stand to see you move on to a great life. As much as they say, hey, I'll always love you, and oh, I wish you nothing but happiness, believe me, it's all a bunch of jive, right? What she really wants is for you to sit at home crying over her for the next century that you're alive. She does not want to see you get back out there in the dating market and win, right? She does not want to see you with these younger, more beautiful, more attractive women, okay? She wants to see you miserable and completely giving up on life you know but when the reality hits them that hey you know dating is designed to work for men as we get older not women uh, that is when they have regret especially when she sees that you move on to someone better than her right I, I mean I can't I mean it's it's so just <laughs> classless too when I see these women like divorce their husbands and then suddenly freak out when he moves on it's like you divorced him okay why are you freaking out you should want him to move on didn't you tell him to move on like you're getting divorced why are you freaking out it's a guy taking a photo of my lambo over there <laughs> in his truck that's funny he's got his camera phone yeah so uh yeah what's funny is uh 
I thought the the DeLorean got more would get more uh, head turns than the Lamborghini, but I mean, I I think it's pretty equal at this point, right? This get, this car gets a different type of look, though. I mean, it's kind of uh, yeah, it's a different type of look. Like the DeLorean is like a smile machine. I still have it, by the way. But the DeLorean, like when people see it, they smile. Uh, however, when people see this, it's more of like a you know, just like their mouths are open. Um, it's funny, this guy's still taking photos. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> These chicks, like, they divorce their husbands because they're getting bad advice from friends of theirs that really don't want to see them happy. What have I told you girls, man? Don't listen to your friends. They, they, the worst thing <laughs> that a woman wants to see is somebody else happy and they're not happy, right? Women are just natural born sabotagers. So... Yeah, that is the last thing that she wants to, you know, see is you happy. And finally this guy left. Oh my gosh. She was like sitting there forever like taking video and photos and like zooming in and like, okay, all right, dude, get the shot, get the shot, man. It's kind of like when uh I ha I haven't had this happen in this car yet, but like my DeLorean sometimes I mean it's so it's 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 kind of scary sometimes because my DeLorean, they'll ride on my blind side, say I'm on the freeway, like dudes like whoever they'll like ride on the blind side filming and i can't see them right you can't if you've ever driven a delorean you cannot see out of the uh, rear window i mean even in this car a lot of blind sides in this car you have to be super careful so when people are riding your blind side filming it's yeah it's a little uh nerve-wracking man um so uh yeah i'm always like all right dude get the shot get your shot let's go don't ride my blind side i don't want to you know switch it like hit you when i switch lanes in any case uh yeah so this is just another chick who will regret divorcing her husband and these women will just never learn next clip so it turns out there's this really part of the divorce process it's called discovery and it's where you can discover that the person that you thought you were married to exist in reality or just in your heart oh mm. I mean if that's not validation that you made the right choices I don't know what is but this is also why you vet your partner before you get married you don't just get married that way you know who you're marrying right I, I think people today are way too impulsive and they don't think you know, especially when it comes to major life decisions like buying a car, buying a house, getting married, having kids. You got to think about these things, right? You, you have to think like you have to give yourself lots of time to think because it's it's a pretty life changing decision. So, um, I mean, the, I mean, especially when it comes to these women, they're so like really just spontaneous you know when they when it comes to things like this um and this is why they end up having problems later so she's complaining like oh yeah i didn't uh, he's not the guy i thought i married well shoot that's why you try to get to know him as best as you can and even still you won't really know him know him right i mean and that's kind of good in many ways i mean you want some sort of mystery <laughs> you, you don't want to know the person like totally in and out but just good enough where you go okay this person's not gonna chop my head off or end up uh, being some serial killer or some you know like uh, you know physical abuser or anything like that you get to know him well enough he has a you know he's able to keep his temper in check he's got a good head on his shoulder he makes good decisions you know and uh, so I can trust him I think I'll marry this dude but too many of these women they just you know, they have shiny object syndrome and they see the bright lights and uh, just like a gambler, right? You get taken in by the lights of the casino and the floor and all the colors and all the sounds from the slot machines and uh, you're not really paying attention. Next thing you know, you've gambled away like $3,000. Next clip. If I have to hear one more man say that his wife is better at doing laundry and that's why he doesn't do it, I will spontaneously combust because it's not that your wife is just inherently better at doing laundry. It's just that no one's gonna pick up the slack if she forgets. So it's not like she has some magical flick of the wrist when it comes to putting in the laundry detergent. It's just that her partner isn't partnering when it comes to the laundry department and practice makes perfect. You have the luxury of believing that doing laundry is a choice because you know that she'll always get it done if you don't. But she doesn't have that choice because if she stopped doing laundry and waited for you, then the clothes would pile up to the ceiling, everyone would run out of underwear, and the socks would get stiff enough to walk themselves.
If your wife said that she sucked at doing laundry as an excuse to get out of it, then her partner, her parents, and society as a whole would tell her to hurry up and learn how to get better at it because clothes need to be washed and no one said that not doing them was an option. But no one would say that to a man because you have your mother, your wife, or a laundry service since cleaning clothes is gendered even though everybody needs to wear them. And even if you really did feel like you couldn't, well, then you could always just make a decision to learn. I mean, imagine if you couldn't find the sports channels. I bet you'd read a map, take classes, or even watch some instructional videos. Your wife was raised believing that learning how to do laundry was a necessity, but you act like you were raised believing that you could just find someone else to do it for you. So it's not that your wife just has some inherent skill. It's just that you have the benefit of weaponized incompetence. And maybe you should consider putting that down because I think you'll find it's amazing what you can learn how to do when you stop hiding behind the word can't and start accepting that you just won't. Here's a quick lesson for you guys when it comes to laundry. If you're gonna get married, find yourself a wife who actually enjoys doing it. Find yourself a wife who actually enjoys keeping the house clean. Find yourself a wife who actually enjoys being a housewife, even if she's not a housewife. Find a woman who just enjoys coming home to a tidy house, not a messy house, but a clean house where the laundry is done, things are in order, you know, your place is not a mess, doesn't look like a tornado hit it. You have to find a woman like that because a chick like this who's already complaining about something as you know, minuscule as a laundry. I mean, I can't imagine how many other things she's going to complain about. She's going to complain about the refrigerator. She's going to be complaining about, you know, the power bill. She's going to be complaining about everything and anything. I mean, the laundry is like the easiest thing to do in my opinion, right? You just throw it in, you press a button. Then you, once it's done, you throw it in the dryer, press a button, done. It shouldn't be that hard, right? It shouldn't be that hard. Probably the hardest part is like all the folding. Sure. Right? But again, find yourself a woman who likes to do those things and is not going to bitch and complain about it, right? Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I grew up in a family where, you know, the women in my family, my mother, my grandmothers, they were very tidy. I mean, I I was kind of a messy kid growing up, but they would just, like, pick things up, clean it, you know. they I, I remember kind of getting uh, aggravated because they were always cleaning, right? Uh, but now I see the value in that. But now as an adult, I like a clean house. And they would tell me that, like, I like a clean house. Okay, as a kid, you don't get that. But now as an adult, I get that. I like a clean house. Um, however, I don't like to always do those things. And if you're the breadwinner, if you're bringing home the bacon and uh, you're paying for the majority of things and you're the one who takes care of the house and all this, doing laundry is easy, right? <laughs> doing laundry is the easy part. I love how this chick forgets the fact that when it comes to changing the oil in the car, when dealing with a check engine light in your car, changing the tires or any type of maintenance that, uh, you know, when it comes to the machinery in your home, whether it's your vehicles or, you know, your, your physical house, you have to take care of as a guy. Is she gonna be, you know, getting on Yelp and calling for the roofers and the general contractors when things break? No, that's gonna be you, okay? That's gonna be you. So. Uh, should she, you know, complain about the laundry every once in a while? Absolutely not, right? Do the laundry. I mean, it's just, hey, if you're, you know, if you're busy and you're making the bread and you're doing all the work and you're taking care of the cars and all that, you know what? Do the freaking laundry. Do the freaking laundry, right? Um, and I've left women like that in the past that are, were good looking chicks, hot, lots of other guys wanted them, but I, I saw that just as far as like a teammate goes, I'm like, this won't work. I feel like I'm doing all the work and you can't even just do the laundry. Right, I, I, that's not that's not gonna work for me, right? I, I'm a winner, man, and uh, I want to be with a chick who's a winner too, right? I want to be with a chick who gets things done and doesn't bitch about it. I don't want to hear any complaints. Just go do it, right? So yeah, this chick is just uh, good luck finding a guy that yeah you know, that you can bitch about that to that will still, on top of doing the laundry or helping you with it, uh, will take care of your car when uh, it's time to change your oil or you know, do any sort of maintenance or any repairs on it and it needs towing or you get into a car accident, God forbid, or, you know, something's wrong with it and he needs to go pick you up and, you know, and uh, all that. Those are things that guys generally take care of, right? Not you. So 
As always, gentlemen, drop your comments below. Let me know what you think of tonight's coaching video. Anything you'd like to share, anything you'd like to add, drop them in the comments below, please. All right, this is M from the 33 Secrets signing out here with the Lamborghini. Yes, it's my Lambo. Go to Matt Cross Official, my IG. See the entire process of me purchasing this vehicle. It took about two months to close. And the same guy who delivered my DeLorean also delivered my Lamborghini. TJ at Florida Exotic Transport. If you ever need to transport a muscle car, exotic car, he's your man. So, very excited about this vehicle. It's uh, actually a pretty rare find. It's Rossifesto Red, which is one of the rarest colors for Lamborghini. It's a $14,880 option, believe it or not. I was on a hunt for one for over two years, just like I was my DeLorean. Finally found one. It's got super low miles, 11K, not bad. And we're gonna be featuring this car a lot more here on the channel for many years to come. This is gorgeous, isn't it? Whew. Oh my gosh, take a look at this. It hasn't dried yet, but I'm still putting this on there. It's my IG tag. But as always, gentlemen, make sure you smash that like button. Smash that like button below. Do it for the Lamborghini and the DeLorean. I still have it, by the way. I'm not selling the DeLorean. I'll probably keep this car for a little bit, but uh, DeLorean is going to stay. So uh, we'll get the DeLorean back on here pretty soon. But uh, enjoy the Lamborghini. And again, smash the like button. Smash that subscribe button as well. Helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. And for you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill, gold pill, platinum pill content that I'm teaching you even further, best way to do that is by jumping into my monthly online coaching program, Seven Months to Mastery, where I'm teaching guys just like you how to go out there into the world and approach and close the youngest, hottest, and most beautiful looking women on the planet. I'm talking about eights, nines, and tens, same exact type of women that myself and all of my coaching students all around the world now are out there approaching and closing every single week. And I kid you not, we are making it happen every single week. And I want you to become one of us. I want you to join us. And right now it's only a buck for the entire first month of coaching lessons from me in mastery. So take advantage of it. It's the best way to support my work. If you love what I'm doing here, if you love what I'm teaching you here, and you feel like I've added value to your life, this is the best way to pay me back. Get into my monthly online coaching program, Seven Months of Mastery. All you need to do is click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you can get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now, and I'll see you in my next coaching video. I'm out with the Lambo. Till next time. Oof. So sweet.